Welcome to seven days of yoga. I'm Melissa Krieger with Do Yoga With Me. I'm so excited to bring my first seven day challenge. This is day one where we're learning the basics and the breath and learning how to connect your breath to your core. You'll need a block for this program. There'll be a short Shavasana at the end, but you're welcome to stay longer. Enjoy. For today's practice, we'll begin lying on our backs. If you'd like to have head support, you're welcome to. Have your feet flat and your knees bent. You might let the knees knock in towards each other. Move your chin a little bit closer to the chest so the back of the neck gets longer. You can rest your arms however you're comfortable. Your eyes can be opened or closed. Taking a little bit of time to settle in. Notice the contact points where your body touches down. Notice your whole self here, right now, in this moment, in this body. Start to pay more attention to your breath and slow down your inhale and exhale. Start to make your exhale a little longer and even a little sharper. So the sensation that you're trying to blow your breath all the way out. As you keep doing that, notice a couple of things. One, when you exhale all the way out, the inhale is really easy. It's just there. And for some students, that's a little bit more comfortable. But also, when we exhale out right to the bottom, we help to connect into our deep core muscles, our abdominal muscles and our pelvic floor muscles. It's a reflex that we all have. And we want to take advantage of that reflex during our practices together. So play with that a little bit more. So while we all do have this reflex, there's lots of reasons that that reflex can get switched off or delayed. So I would also encourage you to connect into those deep core muscles a little bit more if you're able to. When you exhale all the way out, can you also draw back at your low belly? So a couple inches below your belly button. Letting that inhale come in nice and slow. Exhaling again all the way out, pulling back at the low belly. And then could you also pull up the muscles at the base of the pelvis, the muscles of the pelvic floor? And the inhale, you're just focusing on getting a good breath in, letting your body relax. And then exhaling to reconnect. So definitely blowing your breath all the way out. If it's possible, drawing back at the low belly and pulling up on your pelvic floor. If it's not possible, that's okay. It might take some time, some practice. But if it's really throwing you off, then just stick with those long exhales. And this will get a little bit easier each time you practice. Sometimes we have to rebuild that connection. So we'll try that a couple more times before we move on. Notice that with that extended exhale and the low belly pulling back and the pelvic floor drawing up, that there's no movement. The torso isn't moving, your backside isn't engaging. It's all an internal connection. So the body should be able to stay still during this. Take one more round of breath, please. Walk your feet about as wide as your mat. Your arms could stretch out and then start to drop your legs from side to side like windshield wipers. Just coming into a nice twist to get things moving. 
it could feel interesting to move your head. Your head could go with your knees or away from the knees. Come on back through to center. Walk your feet a little bit closer together. Take a big exhale. Wake up your core. Draw your knees in towards your chest. Hold on to your legs, however, wherever you like. You can stay still or rock a little bit from side to side. So in today's practice, I'm getting you moving all the different ways that you can, all the different ways that your spine can move, and moving through a few basic yoga poses. Bring your hands to your knees and circle your knees whatever direction you like, out and away from each other or uh, towards each other in the same movement. And change directions. Bending your elbows and your knees, so straighten your arms and legs. Try to straighten them completely. And then bend your elbows and your knees back down again. So in this practice and most of the practices that I take you through, I'm working on moving through your various uh, joints, your muscles, getting you to move your body all the different ways that it can. Bring yourself back up again. Have a little bit of give in the elbows and the knees. Circle out your wrists and your ankles. Remember, they're a little creaky. They can be a bit talkative, and that's okay. And go the other way. It might feel good to stay up like this and still, or it might be nice to give your arms and legs a bit of a jiggle. Either way, take a couple more deep breaths. Bring your hands, your feet back down again. Walk the feet a little bit closer together. Bring your arms down beside you, chins tucked in. Start to move your arms. Inhale, reach your arms up and back. And exhale, come above your chest again and down. You can move at the pace that suits you. Do try to link up your breath and your movement. You can keep working here with just the arms, or you might add in the lower body, add in a bridge, pressing your feet down, lifting up your hips as your arms stretch up and back, and then lowering back down again. A couple more times. Feel that strong connection, both feet, all your toes pushing down into the ground. Last one. Roll over to one side and then push yourself up and into all fours, please. Generally speaking, in all fours, we want the wrists underneath the shoulders with the fingers spread quite wide. So you want to get lots of mat space in between your fingers. If that's not a great fit, you could come down to your fists instead or even down to your forearm, so you decide. Moving through cat-cow curls, let your belly fall forward, look a little forward, that could be the inhale. Exhale, drop your head, push your mid back up to the sky, round your back. Keep moving through both curves. Come on back through to center, and we'll take a lateral stretch, flexion. Exhale, turn back, check out your feet. Inhale, come on back through to center. Exhale to check out the other side. So our side cat, it could get bigger. Your feet could move, your arms could move. If it felt good to hang out for a few breaths on either side, you could. Come on back through to center and then start to sway your hips a little bit from side to side. And you could stick with that sway or that could start to become a circle. 
And that circle could bring in your ribs, your hips, your pelvis, your spine. And the other way, please. Just trying to get your spine moving all the different ways that it can. Make your way back to child's pose, knees a little wider, big toes closer together. Hips can push back towards the heels. Forehead can come down to the mat or your hands. Take three slow breaths. Come on back up again. Making your way up towards downward dog. Walk your hands a little bit forward and a little bit wider. Spread your fingers wide. Pinky fingers might touch the sides of the mat. Again, you want lots of mat space in between your fingers. Tuck your toes under, lift up the knees, push the hips up and back. Let your head drop down. Your knees don't have to be straight. For most of us having a little bit or a lot of a bend in the knees is more comfortable. The heels may or may not touch the floor, it doesn't matter. There is the sensation of trying to push your hips back, letting the spine be long. If downward dog isn't a great fit, all fours or child's pose would be really great alternatives, so you're welcome to choose those shapes whenever you'd like. Take one more breath, please. From either this downward dog or coming down to all fours, Step your right foot forward and try to get it up in between the hands as best as you can, but that, that doesn't always happen. So if your foot ended up a little bit behind you, just bring your hand to slide that leg into place, or you could stand up to get yourself back into the shape, whatever makes more sense. I'll take a few breaths here. So quite a deep bend into the front knee, front ankle and knee in the same line. Back leg is strong and straight. One more breath. Turn your back toes out and flatten that foot down onto the floor. And you might look back and see that that's happening. So that whole foot is flat. Push both feet down into the ground and bring yourself up to standing. So we're setting up for warrior two pose. Back foot's about parallel to the short side of the mat. Front knee is bending. And take a peek and just see that your toes and knees are going in the same direction. What tends to happen is the knee drops in, but what we wanna do is externally rotate through the hip to keep the knee open. Something you can try is bring your hand to the outside of your thigh, push your thigh against your hand, and you'll see in the knee kind of opens out that external rotation. This is where we wanna be for strength and stability through the knee. Stretch your arms front and back. Take a couple more breaths. Shifting this into triangle pose, straighten your front leg. So both of your legs are straight. Shift your hips back behind you. Reach as far forward as you can. And then eventually tip down. And that hand can rest somewhere on the shin, the ankle, whatever feels the best for you. It doesn't have to be super low. And then the top arm fingers reach up towards the ceiling and pretend there's a wall behind you and you're trying to kind of lean into that wall. You could be looking down to the side or even up. Generally speaking, you have more stability. It feels a little easier for your balance if you're looking down. So you can play with that. Round of breath. Bend into your front knee quite a lot. Bring your front arm to rest on your thigh. Extended side angle. This top arm, the fingers can reach right up towards the ceiling if your shoulder likes that angle best or that arm could drop down and around and the fingers could reach forward. Still the same kind of external rotation through the hips for this whole little sequence. 
round of breath. Bring your hands down to the ground on either side of that front foot and lift up your back heel so your back toes point forward. So we, we changed the direction of the hips. We were externally rotated, kind of open to the long side of the mat before, and now we're pointed forward or even neutral, you might say. That sets us up well to go back to downward dog. So as you're ready, hands to the ground, front foot steps back to downward dog or all fours or child's pose. Take a couple of breaths, please. From all fours or downward dog, step your left foot forward. Remembering it's a little awkward. And if the foot didn't quite get there, just use your hand to bring it up, no big deal. Taking that deep bend into the front knee, this front ankle and knee staying more or less in the same line. We maintain that through this whole sequence. Turn your back foot out so that foot's about parallel to the short side of the mat. Push the feet firmly into the floor, come up to warrior B or warrior two, they're the same shape. Still externally rotating through that front hip, maybe just taking a peek and if you can't quite get it, remember your hand can come to the outer thigh, push against it and then that'll help wake up these muscles and just give you a little bit more feedback of where the leg should be. Stretch your arms out front and back. It can be interesting to look at your back arm and just see what is happening there. Sometimes it gets a little bit off kilter, so bring it back in. And as long as it's okay for the neck, you're looking forward, but of course you could look anywhere else that feels good. Shifting into triangle pose, straighten your front leg, both legs are straight, kick your hips back behind you, reach as far forward as you can, eventually you're tipping down. So this is meant to be quite a narrow pose. That's why I'm suggesting pretend there's a wall behind you and you're trying to lean into it a little bit. So it's not about reaching down super low because we kind of collapse in. That extra height and length through the ribs, through the torso makes the most sense. Top arm, fingers reach up towards the ceiling if that's okay for your shoulder, but you can always play around with that angle. Bend the front knee quite a bit. Bend your front arm so it rests on your thigh, that extended side angle, angle, fingers can reach up towards the ceiling or the arm could drop down and around. So we're creating this long line from the outside edge of the foot all the way through the head and in this case with my arm through the fingertips too. And that shift with the hips is coming up, so bring your hands down towards the floor, please. Lift up your back heel so your back toes point forward, and then stepping your front foot back to downward dog, all fours, or child's pose. Take a few more breaths. Make your way to downward dog if you're not already there. Bend your knees and look a little forward. Step or hop or lunge your feet up towards your hands, so up towards the top of the mat. Slide the hands to the shins, come up halfway, flatten your back, inhale. Exhale and fold back down again. Let's hang out here for a few breaths in your forward fold. Your knees can again be as bent as they need to. Whatever you need to do to let your spine relax, your head hang down. The arms can hang or you can grab your elbows or the hands can rest somewhere on the legs. They don't necessarily have to touch the floor. Take a few breaths. Slide the hands to the shins again. Come up about halfway, flatten your back. Exhale and fold down. Roll up to standing. Maybe the hands walk up the legs. And the head can come up last. 
And once you get to the top, you might roll the shoulders back a few times or circle the arms back. Settling into mountain pose. So connect the feet into the floor, a little bit of space between them, toes spread wide. A bit of give in the knees, that rolling back of the shoulders. Feel that the chin's about parallel to the floor, head pulls back slightly. Your eyes can be opened or closed. Just feeling this shape, strong and stable mountain. Open up your eyes if they were closed. Balance as a whole can of worms, and we will continue to explore it. But for now, I just want you to get used to shifting your weight from side to side. Your feet play a huge role in your balance, and trying to relax your feet and spread your toes as wide as they can can be really helpful. Shift your weight over towards one side, doesn't matter what side it is. Maybe that other foot, maybe the heel can lift, maybe the whole foot can lift. Shift over towards the other side, kind of drive that foot down into the floor, maybe the other leg's lifting up. So the things that help with your balance besides your feet are having a stationary point to focus on. That could be down on the floor. I do find that a little bit more manageable, but you could also explore like looking out on the horizon. Breathing, of course. So using that strong, sharp exhale, as well as trying to pull back at your low belly and pull up at your pelvic floor. Maybe you're exploring lifting the leg up a little bit more. Maybe you're changing the pace a little bit. Just see what works for you. Your arms, they can do whatever they want. If airplane arms are helpful, absolutely. Let's add a little bit more to this. So shift your weight over to one foot. Doesn't matter which foot it is. Take up some space with that foot and really drive that foot, that leg down into the ground. The leg you're gonna be balancing on, pull that hip in a little bit so the pelvis is more stacked. Big exhale, wake up your core. The other leg, spin it out. And see how I'm keeping my toes on the floor and my heel is pushing against my ankle. This works really well for stability, this kickstand version of tree. You can stay just like this, or that foot might slide a little bit up the leg, so you might end up below the knee. The hands can do whatever they want. Sometimes the sensation of squeezing in towards the midline, so here with my hands in prayer and with my foot and my leg against each other, can provide a little bit more stability too. Take a round of breath. Release that. Shift your weight over towards the other foot. Balance will be totally different from side to side. It's super normal. Wake up that leg a little bit. Pull that pelvis in. Big exhale. Wake up your core. Spin the other leg out. Remember this kickstand version is here. It works really well. Or maybe that foot wants to slide up. Totally up to you. Whatever you want to do with your arms, your hands. Uh, I would suggest keeping your eyes open unless you want a real challenge and then you could play around with closing your eyes, but that is a lot. Round of breath. Bring that foot back down to the floor, release your arms. The feet might continue to have this little bit of space in between them. I find for a lot of bodies that just feels more comfortable. Or you could bring your legs in side by side as we're preparing to come down in the sun salutation. Either way, bring your hands into prayer. Take a breath in. Exhale, drop your hands. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, dive down. Bring your hands to your shins, come up halfway flat back. Exhale, fold, bend your knees enough so you can get your hands down to the floor. Step or lunge or hop. Back to high plank, back to the top of the push-up. So similar hands as downward dog, but with the wrists right underneath the shoulders and the hands a little bit narrower. Breathe in, lots of work here in the belly. Maybe drop your knees down first, that modifies this a little bit. And exhale and lower down, try to get your chest and your hips there at the same time. Once you get down here, stretch one arm forward. Bring the other arm back behind you. So we're coming into a Superman, opposite arm, opposite leg. So this arm that stretched forward will be lifting and the opposite leg will lift behind you. Breathe in, lift, and lower. Do that two more times, please. Change sides, other arm stretches forward. Uh, turn the palm in and have the thumb up towards the ceiling. It's just a little bit easier for your arm to lift that way. 
Other hand drops back behind you. If your shoulder doesn't like this position, the arm can easily be beside you instead. Keeping the back of the neck long, looking down to the ground. And as you're ready, lift your arm, chest, and opposite leg three times. Lower back down again and either make it comfortable to rest on your stomach, push back to child's pose, or head up and back to downward dog. You'll take a few breaths there once you get there. Make your way up or in to a comfortable seated position. Bring your legs out in front of you and your hands back behind you. Be a little bit of space in between your feet. Let your knees drop from side to side. Maybe the hips are kind of rooted on the ground or maybe there's some movement that the hips will move a little bit more as you go from side to side. Drop your knees over towards one side now, and then use the hand at the hip to kind of push the hip around a little bit more. So eventually you're facing the top corner of your mat, and both hands can come down to the ground. So this is a twist, and you can stay just like this. It's an interesting seated twist. You'll be able to kind of breathe a little bit more into your belly and access more into the low back. You can stay up high like this. This works really well where the arms might walk a little bit more forward, or you might come down to your forearms. Getting lower isn't necessarily better, it's just different. So I would go with the one that you like the best. Take a couple breaths. Start to make your way back out of it, please. And then heading over to the other side so the knees fall in the other direction. Maybe that hand comes around to press the hip around. The hands come down to the mat. This is enough. Or the arms might go a little bit more forward so the chest might come a bit lower to the ground. Or maybe coming down to the forearms. And it can be really different from side to side, so just choose the one that suits you on this side. As you're ready, start to press back up again. And then beginning to turn forward. Make your way down onto your back and have that block or that prop handy. Once you get here, move your chin a little bit closer to your chest. Take a big exhale, wake up your core, draw your knees in. Like the last time, you can stay still or you can move a bit. So I'm trying to get you to move all the different ways that you can. We twisted, we side stretch, so lateral flexion. We extended our spine doing back bends. We did flexion, folding forward, we balanced. And then I'm often also trying to think of how to get you upside down, but in a really accessible way. So downward dogs and standing forward folds are upside down poses. But then there's this also this really nice pose called waterfall pose. It's like legs up the wall pose without the wall. And this is where you'll use your prop. Just to note, when we are lifting the hips, we don't want anything behind the head. So remove any props that you might have from behind your head. Have your prop handy. Push your feet down, lift your hips up. Pull that prop underneath your pelvis. And then you can draw your knees in towards your chest. And the way the prop's placed, it should make it pretty easy for your legs to get up in the air. Like it shouldn't feel like a ton of work. It's not meant to be an abdominal exercise. You can play around with pushing the prop a little bit farther away if that's helpful. You can play around with using your arms to support your legs if that feels like it makes more sense. Or the arms can just, or the legs, sorry, can just be up in the air. The legs could be still or a little bit of movement can feel interesting. 
Maybe the feet want to move, the legs. Maybe the arms are involved. Maybe they're up too. Whatever you're doing, take a few more breaths, please. Bring your feet down to the floor, your arms down too if they are up. Push the feet down into the mat, lift your hips up, grab a hold of that prop, pull it out of the way, put it off to the side. And then just see if there's anything you might need to do before we settle into Shavasana. If you're ready for Shavasana, set yourself up. Remember your legs can be straight or they can be bent. Your arms can rest however they're comfortable. We won't be here for too long, but you are welcome to stay longer. In Shavasana, you do want to try to let it all go. All that good work we did with your breath and with your deep core, that can relax. Just let your breath do your thing. Rest and absorb your practice. If you'd like to stay longer in your Shavasana, please do. Just ignore me. Take your time. If you're wanting to start to move again, you may begin to wiggle your fingers and your toes. Good. Circle out your wrists and your ankles. Go for a big stretch, maybe a big yawn. Bend your knees, roll over to your side, use your bottom arm like a cushion. And gradually go ahead and push yourself up, coming to a comfortable seated position. Bring your hands to prayer position. Close your eyes and bow your head down. Notice how you feel. Thank yourself for showing up. Thank your body for all its hard work. Open your eyes. Lift your gaze. Namaste.